Morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tyne. And I'm back, I haven't been on for a little while, over a week now. It is Wednesday today, Wednesday the 22nd of April, otherwise known in the UK as Great British Sewing Bee Day. Hooray! <laughs> Just in case you can see difference around you. Um, this is what is currently or was my sewing room and is going to become the nursery. So we've moved things around. Hiya! We've moved things around while we paint. So you can see that yellow tape that's around the door frame. That is the, the painting tape because we've painted the wall over here and around the door like a pale grey, it's called polished pebble. So yeah, we've done that, we've done two coats on that side. And then we've got the window over here, which is where I usually sit in front of. And that is going to be painted grey as well. So that's all taped off at the moment. Then the wall behind me and in front of me is going to be wallpapered. But because we've got all of my furniture in here and my sewing things, we can only do one wall at a time. So we're having to, move furniture around, do one wall, wait for that to dry, do a second coat, wait for that to dry, then move the furniture again so we can do another wall. So it's just taken a little while, but that's fine. We've got time at the moment where we can do it. The cats are a bit confused because everything's different. Everything's in a different place. And yeah, I just thought I would come on. I'm planning on getting some sewing done today. The past week or so has been very, unproductive. I'm now 29 weeks pregnant and in my third trimester and it's just hit me a little bit I think in terms of energy levels, tiredness, complete lack of energy I suppose. I was concerned because a few people have mentioned low iron levels which a lot of people can have during pregnancy but I had my midwife appointment last week where I had my bloods taken and nothing's come back from that and it's been a week now and I would have heard back so I think my iron levels must be fine I think it's just tiredness from the baby growing quite a lot so that's okay I'll just embrace it and sleep when I need to which is most of the time <laughs> I'm having naps for about two to three hours every day although I didn't have one yesterday so yeah, that's why I haven't been on for over a week because I've just been sleeping really and I haven't done anything so unrelated. But today, in honour of it being Great British Sewing Bee Day in the UK, <laughs> I thought I would try and get some things done. So I managed to cut out two pairs of True Bias Hudson pants for Sam last night because he absolutely loves the pair that I made him a couple of weeks ago. So I've cut out another couple of pairs just in cotton jersey. So I thought I'll sew those up today and take you along with me. Thank you for everybody's comments on my last video, the Bertha Cardigan video. A couple of people mentioned, and I realized after I'd filmed the whole thing, that I didn't really change the camera angle very much. So I didn't really show you me actually sewing. And I think at the time, it was a conscious decision because the room was in chaos because we're moving things around and I didn't want to show too much of what was going on around me because it was just chaotic. There's, you know, decorating things everywhere and piles of things. So yeah, I kind of, it was a conscious decision at the time because of that. But then afterwards I realized, you know, people probably would have preferred to see what I was actually doing at the sewing machine or what have you. So yeah, I'm sorry about that, but hopefully people still enjoyed the video and got a lot out of it, which I think people did from the comments that I got, which was lovely, thank you. So yeah, today's plans, I'll sew up those two pairs of Hudson pants. They're both going to just use navy thread and navy overlocking thread, so I can batch sew them. And I'll try my very best to remember to change the camera angle around each time. It's just remembering to go from front view to then finding somewhere on the side that I can then film showing what I'm doing but I will try my very best. I'm also surrounded by some fabric which I'm currently putting onto Trello. So again if you watched that video all about how I'm organising my fabric stash using Trello you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to get a few fabrics on every day. Hello Chester. 
<laughs> That's Jester's tail. Doesn't appear very often on this channel. Yeah, so I'm going to finish off measuring up these fabrics, getting them onto Trello, and then I think I'll make a start with the hoods and pants. What is great is I've got loads of the fabric left over to make matching clothes for the baby, so I'm very excited about that. Right, I'll catch you in a little bit. Hi, I'm back. It's a lot later in the day. It's half past one now, actually, but I haven't done any sewing since I last spoke to you. I have put more fabrics on Trello. I've written a blog post for Lamazi and made some lovely breakfast for myself and Sam, things like that. So now I'm going to be doing some sewing. So I wanted to show you the two different fabrics that I've got for the Hudson pants for Sam. You'll notice a theme. First one is this amazing space print cotton jersey which is from Lubidoo Fabrics. I bought three meters of this because I thought I'll be able to make Sam some Hudson pants and then something for the baby as well but once I cut out the Hudson pants yesterday I've got loads left so I think I can actually fit myself some Hudson pants out of what's left and some for the baby so we can all be matching together which is just so cute. So yeah this fabric and then for the waistband and the ankle cuffs and the pocket detail I've got this fleece back sweatshirt in with like little flecks in it of different colours and I thought that matched quite nicely with the little sort of yellow flecks that are in the main fabric. So that's one pair and then the other pair is this amazing print from First for Fabrics. This is a Stoff of Denmark cotton jersey in oh, just the most gorgeous star print with like mottled, is it mottled? Is that a word? Like cloudy sort of print in the background. Love it. And then I've got actual ribbon for the waistband and everything on those. So let's hold them together. There we go. So navy ribbon and star print cotton jersey. So I'm going to start making them. The first step is to get the pocket detail which is this small rectangle and fold that in half lengthways and press it wrong sides together. Now my iron broke the other day which is a disaster for any sewist, <laughs> a real disaster, but I've got my prim mini iron so I'm going to use that. So I'm going to go over and press all of my pocket details, so four in total, wrong sides together so they look like that. I won't show you me doing that but then I'll come back and show you the next step. Right so what I've got here is the pocket facings and then my pocket detail which I've pressed wrong sides together and just put a clip in to keep that safe. And what we need to do is we need to pin or clip the raw edges of the pocket detail down this straight edge of the pocket facing and we're going to just stretch it slightly so it fits along there. There we go, I'm going to repeat that with the other three pockets. Another one for this pair and the other two for the other pair. And now we just need to baste that at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm just going to do that with a straight stitch. Right, so the next step is to get our pant front pieces and the way to differentiate the front and the back is the back has two notches snipped into it whereas the front only has one and also the front has this like straight diagonal line going down it which the back pant doesn't the back pant just comes across and down like that so we know that this is the front and what we need to do is get our pocket piece with our pocket detail on and we're going to put that right sides together with the pocket facing upside down, the pocket detail in the middle and then the pant front right side up and we're going to put that all together like that, we're going to clip down this edge 
and then we're going to sew that at three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on all four of my pieces. So they're done. So I'm going to my sewing machine to sew them at three eighths of an inch, just with a straight stitch because that area doesn't need to stretch at all. Right, so they're all done. So now the next step is to just flip that pocket facing round to the reverse. There are notches to match up, so you can match up the notches there. And then we're just going to press that. So it'll look just like that. So this is the outside. This is where your hand will go into your pocket. So I'm just going to go and press all four of those with the iron. Right, I've pressed those. And now this is what it looks like on the wrong side of the pant. Then we've got the right side here. So what we need to do now, we need to take this pocket facing curved edge here and match it up with our main pocket, right sides together. So we've got the curved edge of the main pocket matching up with the curved edge of the pocket facing. Right sides together, we're going to clip those together and then just stitch around the outside of that curved edge, making sure that you don't get any of this fabric caught. It's just this part of the pocket and this main pocket curved edges sewn together. Now I like to do that on my overlocker but you don't need to, you can just do it on your sewing machine, that's fine but I'm going to do them on my overlocker. So I'm going to clip them all first and then overlock them. So now the pockets are overlocked like this or stitched if you've used your sewing machine, what we need to do is look at it from the right side. Right, so if you arrange it so that you're looking at it from the right side, this is our main pocket piece here, our pocket detail. And we've got notches on all three of the layers here. So the front pant, the pocket facing and the main pocket piece, we've got a notch on each of those pieces there that we need to match up and I'm just going to clip together so you can see there I've clipped that top notch together and then the same again on the side so again we've got a notch through all three layers I'm going to clip that together so now we've got our pants, pan front and our pocket all layered up and we're just going to baste those layers together along the top and those layers together along the side. I just do that on my sewing machine. So I'm going to do that with a straight stitch now. Remembering the seam allowance is three eighths of an inch, so we don't want to do it any bigger than that. So you can either keep it at three eighths of an inch to do your basting, or you can make it slightly smaller so it would fall within the seam allowance when we come to sew it up later. So there's no chance of that baste stitching showing through. So I'll go and do that now on all four of my pieces. Right, they're all done. Just to say that on the side of each leg, you will see that your pocket detail probably does stick out a little bit over the edge. So it just tells you in the instructions to trim that off. So I will do that now. So then it's flush with the side of the pant and I'm just snipping off a few of the threads as well because as you know, I hate loose threads. So that's one done. Just while I'm doing this, um, my sewing machine is set up just with navy thread and a stretch needle. I think when people are maybe starting out just as a beginner, 
like I was, like we all were at some point, it's often tempting just to use the same needle for every single project and I think the more you sew and the more different garments and different fabrics you sew with you'll discover the importance of changing your needle and also not using the same needle for too many projects so you know you need a fresh needle not for every single project but you know every few projects I would say but yeah I'm using a stretch needle for this because I'm using cotton jersey. So in my sewing box I have a few different boxes of different types of needles and they're not very expensive. I think packets of needles are about two pounds, three pounds in the UK. So it's not expensive to have a few different types. So I've got my universal needles, then stretch needles, ballpoint needles, microtex needles, jeans needles, so for denim or heavier fabrics. I've got top stitching needles, I think that might be it. So I've just got a selection, so a box of each of those, and then I've always got the appropriate needle. And it's also worth, before you start a project, especially if it's a new type of fabric that you haven't used before, just spend a bit of time testing out different needles on a scrap of that fabric, just to see which one looks the best, which one sews the best. Um, which one, you know, when you pull your seam apart, so if you stitch your two layers of fabric together and then just have a look at the seam as you pull it apart and see which one reacts the best. And if it's a certain type of fabric, it might even snag the fabric if you use a certain type of needle. So it's just worth spending a bit of time. I didn't do that with this, for example, because I know cotton jersey, I always use a stretch needle, but I was sewing with viscose twill recently and I spent time and I think I tried out seven different needles before I actually decided on the one that I wanted to use and it's definitely worth it. So our next step, we're going to get our left front leg, so as you'd be wearing it. And oh, our left back leg and we're going to stitch them together at the inner leg seam and also with the side seam. So I'm going to spend some time putting together the front and back legs. So when you put them together, for example, this is my left front leg and this is so the crotch curve and then I find the crotch curve on the back and they're the two that I match up. Now I'm not going to clip those but I'm going to match those up and then I'm going to clip a long seam that goes from that crotch curve down to the ankle. So that is this seam here. You can see I've got my crotch curves there. So right sides together, I'm going to clip those. I've got a notch there which I'm going to match up and I'm going to clip all the way down to the ankle seam the ankle hem rather and then the side seams so on those same two pieces we have our side seams again the long straight edges and we've got notches to match up as well so I'm going to go and do that on all of my pieces so the left front and left back the right front and right back and then on the other fabric as well so off we go Our inner leg seam and our side seam are now clipped together on all of our pieces, so our left front and back, our right front and back on both of these pairs. And now I'm just going to go and overlock these together on a 3 8 seam allowance on my overlocker. Again, you don't need to use an overlocker. If you've just got a sewing machine, you can use that absolutely fine, but I'm going to use an overlocker. So, see you soon. Right, those are all done. So we've got all those overlocked edges. And 
I'm going to go and press them. Now in the instructions it says to press your seams open but obviously I've overlocked so that has enclosed the seams so I'm going to press all of my seams to the back. Now as I mentioned earlier my iron is currently broken. Sam has ordered me a new one. I say me. Us. But really it's for me. And <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way as in I do all the ironing. I mean that I use the iron for all of my sewing constantly, so it really is for me. So I am going to be pressing my seams to the back with my prim mini iron, which looks like that. So it's just going to take me a little bit longer because it's obviously not quite as powerful or as large as a standard iron. So I'm going to go away and press all of those seams towards the back and then I'll come back to you. Right, I'm back. I've pressed all the seams on pants. Just to say quickly, Sam's just emptied my memory card and he said that when I've got you propped on my sewing machine, which I have now, that it's not necessarily been completely steady the whole time and it's been like slipping and tipping forward. So I'm really sorry <laughs> if that has been really noticeable. Um, I haven't noticed it myself, but it probably is noticeable on the screen. So we're up to step 10 of the instructions, which is to sew our crotch seams. Let's just choose one pair for now. So I'm going to take the right leg and I'm going to keep that inside out and I'm going to change the left leg so it's the right side out. So that's the left leg as you'd be wearing it. So there's the pocket that will go on the left hand side. And then I'm going to put this right sides out inside this which is wrong sides out. I'm just going to feed it in. And then we need to match up the crotch curve. Right, so our pants are now right sides together, as you can see. And I'm going to match up the crotch curve. Now I'm going to start off by matching up the seam in the centre. And I'm just going to make sure that they match. So I'll clip my seam together in the centre. I'm then going to clip at the top, so that will be sort of the waistline. I'm going to clip the notch there, make sure they're lined up together. And then I'll just put one more clip in to keep that all together. And then going round to the back. So I'm going to go and put a clip in the top of the back waist line. Then we've got our two notches, I think I mentioned earlier, which differentiate the front and the back. So we've got two notches, if you can see that. And I'll match those up. And then just put a couple more clips in. And then we're just going to sew this on the overlocker and then press the seam again to one side right crotch seam is all clipped i'm going to do that on my other pair and then we'll go and overlock right i've just done a little step without recording it i'm very sorry so we're onto the waistband now the trousers crotch seam has been pressed on both of them and then we've just got them the right side out now. So the whole of the trousers are the right side out. So onto the waistband. So I've got my waistband for the navy space pair. And then I've got my ribbon waistband for the star print cloudy pair. But for that, the ribbon came like in the round. Is it in the round? So there's not a cut edge at one side. So it's like two folded edges. So it wasn't wide enough for me to get the whole waistband piece cut on the fold. I've had to do it in two pieces. So all I did to do that was fold my waistband piece in half and then I cut out two of those like on a double layer of the fabric, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So then I've stitched the two ends together, but 
the centre of my waistband at the front where the drawstring buttonholes are going to be. I didn't want that to be a seam like that. So I've just applied interfacing where my buttonholes are going to go and I've done that in the centre so that my two seams where I've joined them are going to be at the sides. Whereas on the speckled waistband for the navy pair the fabric was wide enough so I've only got a seam at one end and the rest of it's just a whole intact piece of fabric so that seam is going to sit at the back so therefore I've applied my interfacing for my buttonholes at the opposite end to where the seam is. <laughs> Am I making sense? So I've got my seam there and at the opposite end is where I've got my interface in. Now in the instructions it tells you how big to cut your interface in because I've made the Hudson's a few times now I just cut a square or a rectangle I don't measure it and then I just applied that to the back of the waistband to the back of the fabric of the waistband so then I'm going to do buttonholes so this bit can be nerve-wracking for some people I know you could also do grommets which is something that I did for the first time yesterday because I'm making a bag so you could or I made a bag yesterday you could apply grommets rather than buttonholes I'm a little bit tempted to do that but maybe I won't maybe I'll stick to buttonholes I'll just stick to buttonholes <laughs> so my machine does buttonholes really easily it has one of these lovely feet attachments, foot attachments, that you put a button into the back of there. Now I just choose a large-ish button to go into the back of there, so then my buttonholes are going to be sort of, well, we don't want them to be too long because when our waistband's folded it's going to be like that and then obviously that bit's going to be in the seam allowance. So we want our buttonholes to be something like that. <laughs> so a button that's about 15 to 20 millimetres, 20, about 20 millimetres I think I'm going to go for. <laughs> I just choose a random button let's be honest and that's what we're going to do so I will set you up so you can see what I'm doing my battery has run out again because I'm filming so much so I need to go and get a new one so next time you see what I'm doing it will be the buttonholes right so I've got my waistband pattern piece and I'm just going to measure the buttonhole marking so it is seven millimeters away from the fold and three centimeters up from the bottom so I'm going to get my waistband here now I've got a snip which is the center so I'm going to measure actually I'm going to put a little line is my centre line right so now I'm going to measure seven millimetres either side you just put a little mark this bit doesn't need to be perfect it could be a bit further apart than seven millimetres it doesn't exactly matter and then I'm going to just measure three centimetres up from the bottom And I know that's where I want my buttonholes to start. So I've done that on that waistband. Let's do it on the other waistband. Now on this one I don't need to draw a centre line because I still have the fold line from where I cut 
the waistband. So again, I'm just going to measure seven millimeters out, put a little chalk mark. It wasn't seven millimeters at all. Let's do that again. the other way and then three centimeters up from the bottom So again, I know where my buttonholes need to start. So I need to get my machine set up for my buttonholes. So I've got my foot, I've got a button. Now on the instructions, it says a half inch buttonhole marking, but I'm just going to make mine a little bit bigger. So I place that button into the back of that piece. Take off my standard foot and I'm going to attach this foot then what you need to remember to do if you've got this sort of machine is pull down this little attachment and that tells us how big our buttonhole is going to be or tells the machine how big to make the buttonhole I need to choose the correct setting on my machine so I know that I need to press that button for buttonholes and I go for 60, 60. I hope this works first time. <laughs> I'm going to place my waistband in. Center it up on my marking. Now on my machine there's like a little window in the buttonhole foot and some little markings that are going to help us get it centered. I'm going to insert my foot and hope for the best. <laughs> right, away we go. Right, here we have it, a glorious buttonhole, <laughs> really happy with that. So when I fold my waistband in half, that buttonhole is placed perfectly. That's fantastic. So I'm going to go away and do the other three now and come back to you when it's time to open these buttonholes up. Right, that is all four buttonholes done, two on each waistband, so it's difficult for you to see, but there we go. We've got those buttonholes there, and those buttonholes there. I'm going to snip off the loose thread from the front, and now I'm going to open up the buttonholes. Now, one way that you can open up buttonholes is with a seam ripper, which is terrifying and can result in ripped fabric. So I picked up a buttonhole chisel from Clover. It's not very expensive at all, maybe about eight pounds. I'll link to one down below that you can get a definite investment if you are going to be doing a lot of buttonholes because it gives you the cleanest, neatest finish to your buttonhole. It's just really easy and straightforward to use. So I'm going to use this to open up my buttonholes. So I just like to do this on a cutting mat take my waistband piece, make sure it's just the single layer and place my buttonhole chisel into the centre of the buttonhole apply a little bit of pressure, give it a little wiggle it 
then move it down and do that again and then we should have an opened up buttonhole let's do that once more there we go so you can see I've got a nice neat buttonhole opening I'll do that again there's my next one and there we go another two perfect buttonholes right the next step was to sew up the side seam or the back seam of your waistband but I did that earlier so it's now a, a ring so I've already done that so the next step is to actually fold this waistband right sides together and then press all the way around but before I do that I want to sew in my labels so I have my own labels that I got from Dutch label shop which look like this sewn on the time and I want to sew one of these into the back of the waistband so now is the time to do it before before I fold the waistband in half so what I need to do is find the center back of my waistband I'm actually just going to fold the waistband so I can picture what it's going to look like when it's worn right so there's my buttonholes at the front so I know that I need my label to go on this bit here so I'm just going to pin that on for the moment actually I'm going to clip it and I'm just going to check that it's in the right place yeah and then I'll do the same with the other one right so then I've got my buttonholes there and then yeah my waistband back is where my label is going to be so yeah it's definitely right <laughs> so I'm going to sew my labels in to keep my labels in place while I sew them I'm going to use washi tape now I used to use pins and I would always find that they would shift a little bit while I was sewing and then my labels would be wonky then I watched Instagram stories and Joy from Pink Coat Club was using washi tape to keep hers in place and they come out straight nearly every time so I'm going to do that yeah I'll sew my labels in and then I am going to go and press this fold all the way around and I'll come back to you after that right so I've sewn the labels in I changed the thread in my sewing machine to black to match in with my label I left the bobbin thread as navy because you won't see that so I've got my label sewn in there I've spotted a loose thread that I can't cope with then I've pressed my waistband all the way around in half and I've just put some clips in the bottom and I've done that with the other one too. So now we're going to clip those onto the trousers. So we'll start with this pair which are right sides out and we're going to get our waistband so what I like to do is put it on as if you were wearing it so that's what it would look like and then flip the waistband upside down so then the raw edges are matching up so like that now and I'm going to line up where the buttonholes are with the centre front seam and clip that on I'm then going to go around to the back seam and match up the centre back so it's actually the seam on this waistband match that up with the centre back seam of the trousers remembering that our raw edges are all going to be together at the top I'll put a clip there then I'm just going to continue on and clip all the way around each side right clip the waistband all the way around now what we need to do is mark off an opening at the back because we're not going to sew about a four inch opening at the back because we need to insert the elastic so I'm just going to put a couple of pins in to remind me not to sew over those bits 
So I've just put in a couple of pins to remind myself that's where I'm going to start sewing all the way around. I'm going to stop sewing when it comes to there. So I'm going to go and do that on the other pair of trousers as well. Right, I've done that on the other pair now as well and I've marked with my pins where I'm not going to sew. So now what we need to do is sew all the way around but leaving that gap at the back. Now you could do this on your overlocker, I've done it on my overlocker before, but I'm actually going to do it on my sewing machine. And the reason is I'm going to, well do it on my sewing machine and then once I've inserted the elastic, I'll close this up on my sewing machine and then I'm going to finish the edge all the way around with the overlocker just so we don't end up with lumpy bits at the back where you've had to do multiple bits of overlocking, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to use a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine to sew these waistbands on. Right, our waistbands are stitched on, leaving that gap at the end. The next step is to insert the elastic. So I've got this two inch elastic and the instruction tells you to wrap it around your lower waist and find the length that feels comfortable but is still snug. And then add half an inch for overlap and then cut the elastic. So I'm going to go and do that on Sam, because obviously they're for him, and just see where he wants to wear them because he wears them lower than I wear mine. So. Yeah, he wears them quite low on his sort of hips really so i'm going to go and do that with the elastic figure out the length that he wants them and cut two lengths of the same and i'll come back i've cut the elastic now to the required length and we're going to use a safety pin to insert that into the waistband i just have a nice big safety pin in my sewing box and i'm going to attach that to one end of the elastic like that and then I'm going to feed it through so I'll change the angle so you can see what I'm doing I'm aware that I'm progressively wearing less and less clothes in this video it's very warm here I need to be nice and cool so yeah I'm going to insert the waist elastic into the waistbands just overlap them by about half an inch at the back and I'm going to clip that together and then we're going to sew that together so we'll do that on both of our waistbands. If I need to stop abruptly it's because our food delivery has arrived and I'm going to go and help Sam unpack it all but hopefully we'll be able to get this bit done. Right, I'm not sure if you could tell on the video there, but what's happened is I think I've cut the elastic too long when I've measured it on Sam because we've ended up with a larger overlap. So if I'd have only overlapped by half an inch, the elastic was going to be too big for the waistband. So I've overlapped it by quite a bit more, maybe two and a half inches. And I'm going to go and try these on Sam and see what they're like and see if that's about right before I enclose the elastic. Right, I've tried these on Sam and we're good to go. So we've got an overlap of a couple of inches at the back. That's fine. So I'm going to sew those together in a minute. I'm just going to insert the elastic into the other waistband as well. And then I'll show you when we come to sew the overlap together at the back. So I'm just going to stitch the two layers of the waistband elastic together. I'm just going to do that in a rectangle, just making sure you don't get anything else caught. And then I'm just going to do a diagonal line from one corner of the rectangle to the other just to add a little bit of extra security. You see Ziggy join us in the background. <laughs> so I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see, but that is our rectangle. So now that's done, we need to close up this waistband gap at the back. So 
I'm just going to push my elastic down so that it's towards the top of the waistband. And I'm going to clip together the three layers. So that's the back of the trousers and the two pieces of the waistband. I don't want to get the elastic caught in there. And to be honest, if we did, it's not the end of the world. Right, so I've just clipped that shut, ready to sew with a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine again. So I'll do the same on the other pair. It's the other pair clipped. I'm going to, like I said, close that up so you can see I've got my zigzag stitch here, the gap, and then my zigzag stitch here. I'm literally just going to use a zigzag stitch to connect those two lines of stitching. That is done. So we've got no gap there at the back and I'm now going to use an overlocker to go all the way around that waistband seam to finish it off. So I'm going to do that on both pairs and we're almost done. Amazing. So our waistbands are overlocked and nice and neat. The waistbands are done. Now, if you're familiar with the Hudson pant pattern, you might be thinking that I've missed out a step. Now that is that you can sew through the waistband and the elastic with a zigzag stitch all the way around twice, so two rows, to sort of gather it in a bit. But the first pair that I made for Sam, when he tried them on, they were perfect without doing that. So I actually just didn't do that step and I'm not going to do that step on these ones either. So the only things left to do are to put our drawstring in which I'm going to leave till last. I'm going to do our cuffs now. So I've got all the cuff pieces. I'm going to get each one and I'm going to get the short sides and sew them right sides together like that. I'm just going to do that on the overlocker for each one. I'm then going to press that seam to one side and then fold the cuffs in half so that we've got the right side on the outside. The ankle cuffs are overlocked, joined together, then I've pressed them, folded them in half, pressed them and just clipped the raw edges to keep them in place. So now we're going to attach these to our ankles. Now I like to have the seam the ankle cuff lined up with the inside leg seam of the trousers. So I've got my inner leg seam and the seam of my ankle cuff lined up. I'm going to clip those together and I'm going to clip over at the other side. Now the cuff is smaller than the bottom of the ankles as you can see. So we just need to stretch the cuff to make them match up. I'm going to do that on all of the pieces. So now we're just going to overlock those cuffs onto the pants. Right, so our cuffs are on. And I'm just going to press that seam up in a couple of minutes. So the very last thing that needs to do, the, the very last thing that needs to happen is to put the drawstring through. Now I've got this lovely flat plaited drawstring, which comes from First for Fabrics. I don't think it's on their website, but if you just message Kaylee, you can order some. They do it in navy, white, and black. Now, stupidly, I've got two meters of navy that I ordered to go with these ones but I forgot that I was planning on making these ones but I've got two meters of white so I'm going to put the navy drawstring into those I'm going to put the white drawstring into these now I don't think it goes wonderfully but I'm going to put it in and then I can replace it in future if we so wish I mean, Sam's not going to be particularly fussy. I'm sure he'd be happy with the white. And there is white in the background of these trousers. So yeah, I'm just going to feed the drawstrings through with a safety pin. And then that's them done. We are finished. Hi Ziggy. There we go. <laughs> yeah, 
two pairs of Hudson pants done. So once I've fed the drawstring through and I've pressed the cuff seams up, I will either get Sam to model them for us or if he's feeling shy, I'll model them because I wore Sam's other pair last night and they fit me perfectly. <laughs> so one of us will come on and show you and show you what they look like on. Ziggy's now just curled herself up on one pair. Is that your favourite pair, Ziggs? You like that pair. Let me show you Ziggs. You've chosen this pair as your favourite, haven't you, Ziggs? You like that one the most. The navy pair where your cat hair will show up the most, obviously. You having a sniff of these ones? You like these ones as well? <laughs> oh, why isn't she so cute? Aren't you so cute? When Ziggy has finished lying on these pants, I'm going to feed the drawstrings through with a safety pin. Attach, not attach the cuffs, press the cuff seams up. So the next thing you'll see is either myself or Sam modeling these trousers and that'll be the end of the video I think so I think I'll say bye now just so it's all finished off so thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed following along with me as I've been sewing the men's true bias hoods and pants do let me know down below if you have made these before or if you've made the women's version these are a great present to make for a man in your life which could be a partner a son a brother, a family member, an next door neighbour. They're really straightforward to make as I hope I have put across in this video and you can make them in really fun prints again as you can see in this video. Right, Sam's trousers are now all covered in cat hair. I'm going to go and get a lint roller to sort that out. Thank you for watching and I will <laughs> see you again in my next video. Happy sewing, bye! band my overlock uh, so last night oh I'm, you propped up on my sewing machine I don't know if this is gonna work uh oh I've moved it now now to keep my waist my to keep my waist no ah, I can't speak